Hi guys, it's Reagan here from Adventure Family Journal. Today, I'm in Israel in the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem is a very important city for the Jewish people. It has a long history and many important landmarks. I'm here to learn from Calvin, the Jerusalem scribe. Hey girls, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Good, you want to check out my new gallery? Yeah. Great, I'm a scribe and I make artwork, so let's check it out, come on. A scribe is someone who writes or copies. Calvin is also an artist, a very good artist. I make pieces, uh, texts and circles in designs. I asked Calvin, what is one of your favorite pieces of art? This is one of my favorites. This is a, a bonfire written from 10 different psalms. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. He combines the Jewish tradition of writing with art. This is the prayer for Israel in the shape of the map of Israel. I love to take um, the prayers and the verses and put them in a form that speaks about the idea. What a great idea. I should try that as an artist. As I'm traveling around the world with my family, I'm exploring different forms of art. The Torah is the holy book for the Jewish people. It's also the first five books of the Christian Bible. Who is the first scribe? Who is the first scribe of the Torah? I don't know. I'll give you a hint. Let my people go. Moses! Exactly. Moses was the first scribe. Every Torah scribe was trained by somebody who is 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 trained by somebody <laughs> That goes all the way back to Moses. The word tradition means something that has been around for a long time. That's the, that's the chain of the tradition. And that knowing that me, living in 21st century, had a teacher who had a teacher going all the way back to Moses himself. Traditions get passed from one person to another for thousands of years. But a scribe doesn't only need to be really book smart or know all the rules, exactly all the information, a scribe also needs to know how to write. So I personally think that a scribe, it's also an artist. A scribe needs to know a lot about the Jewish law. A scribe needs to know how to write and how to do art. When a scribe writes the Torah, they always write on parchment. What do we write the Torah on? Do you guys know? Parchment. Parchment. What's parchment come from? Paper. What type of paper? Do you know? No. It comes from animal skins. Leather. Parchment is made out of animal skins. Amazing, right? And this is the parchment. You guys want to feel? So the par parchment is, is very soft on one side and a little more like slippery on the other side. A little more smooth on the other side. We write on the side of the parchment that's soft. Um, the reason why it's soft is because there's like little tiny micro hairs and that's what holds the ink. We loved feeling the parchment. It feels so different than paper. You see, a holy book like the Torah can't be written on just paper. It's a special book and that's why it gets a special paper. Parchment represents, to me, the world of potential. What can be? For that reason, the parchment has to be made with what we call kavana. Kavana in English is intention. The word potential means the possibilities of what could be. When the Jerusalem scribe holds a piece of parchment, his mind is filled with the possibilities. Each piece of parchment is different. That's because each animal it came from is different. So the ink represents like the function. So the parchment and the ink are those two things. One of them is all about the intention we have and one of them is all about the function. So we have the parchment and the ink. But how does the scribe get the ink onto the parchment? The third material, the third thing, is our pen. These are quills. A scribe uses a quill. How cool is that? These are the different quills I have, right? Because I focus in artwork, I have quills of all different sizes. For the most part, um, you know, I make them myself, and I choose the quill um, based on the need. Calvin chose a quill for him and a quill for me. Different projects required different quills. Only the artist knows the right tool. 
you might have seen quills used in Harry Potter films. There are three very important things that a Jewish scribe writes. There's the three things that a scribe writes. is a Torah scroll, is tefillin, which is called phylacteries, and mezuzah, which goes on the doorpost. At the doorpost of every Jewish home, you see the mezuzah. This is a picture of the mezuzah. And then we put the scroll in the case, and then we hang the case up on a doorpost. It's a reminder that this place is dedicated to God and the Jewish identity. But you see, several hours went into writing this. Each letter is so perfect and so small, that even if one letter has a mistake in it, it can't be used. If even one letter in that mezuzah is wrong, then the whole thing is considered invalid or wrong. If you can't use a holy scroll, you don't throw it away. We bury these scrolls. In the ground? Mm -hmm. It's an act of respect for the holy words. Another thing that the Jewish scribe writes is the Tzvelin. They're also called phylacteries. They're a set of black leather boxes with leather straps, usually worn on the forehead and the arms. The synagogue is a place for Jewish people to worship, much like the Christian people have a church or the Muslims have a mosque. These are three parts of our life that we want to sanctify, that we want to add God consciousness to. We want to add God consciousness to our community, which is our synagogue, which is where we keep the Torah. We want to add God consciousness to our possessions, right? Our homes, our houses, our, our buildings, our gates, our properties. And we want to add God consciousness to ourselves, to our bodies. And so this is why um, these holy scrolls are in these different categories of our life. Hebrew is the language of the Jewish people. I asked Calvin to teach me to write some of the Hebrew alphabet. The work of a scribe has to be very focused. In order that a scribe doesn't make a mistake, in order that he really puts his consciousness, his ideas, his thoughts into what he's writing, and it's done in the proper way, he has to stay very focused on what he's doing. Jewish scribes are completely focused when they're writing. Silent, no talking, one letter at a time. And we try to think not about the word, not about the verse, not about the whole book we're writing, but about the letter we're writing, one letter at a time. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Alpha. The second letter is Bet. Alpha, Bet. Alphabet, get it? Let's call it a dot, so you would call it. Right, this upper is, we say this is like heaven. We say this is, we call the firmament which is the separation of time and space between um, heaven and earth. And this bottom one is earth. As a Jewish scribe, every single letter has to be absolutely perfect. But how do they know if the letters they've written are good enough? You come to a word that the letter doesn't look perfect. You're not sure if it's a good letter or not. So let's say your bet, it kind of looks like this, but it's like, you know, it's like a little off, right? It happens. How do you know whether it's kosher, whether it's valid or not? As I said, if it's not valid, the whole scroll needs to be fixed. It can't be used. So what they do, sometimes, in the law, in the Jewish law, in the tradition, they say we call a child that's not a genius and not foolish, so a normal kid who knows the alphabet but doesn't yet know how to read. We invite the child up to the Torah scroll and we say, what letter is that? Based on their proclamation, the scroll can be valid or invalid. If the child can't recognize the letter, the whole thing is invalid. I tried to write a Hebrew letter with a quill and ink. This kind of calligraphy is not easy. I learned so much by spending time with the Jewish scribe. Thank you to Kalman, the Jerusalem scribe, for hosting us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye for now from Adventure Family Journal.